I was packing a suitcase to go and be married and live in Ohio with my 16-year-old boyfriend. I was 15. And my parents came to me and asked me if I wanted an abortion. And I didn't know what an abortion was. So, you know, I asked them and my dad said, well, you won't be pregnant anymore. You can go back to school because in 1966, girls were kicked out of school when they were pregnant. Um, all I remember thinking is that God had given me a second chance not to be pregnant anymore and a second chance at my education and my life. And I would have done anything um, for that second chance. Daddy took me in our car. We met some people, some men, in a parking lot. We were put into another car I mean, best of my recollection of some sort of station wagon and um, blindfolded. And I probably leaned way down in the seat so other people couldn't see us blindfolded. And when the blindfold was taken off, we were in a warehouse of some sort. There were oily stains on the floor. Um, there were a lot of chairs with a lot of women. Um, I was too afraid to look at anybody's face, so I remember counting pairs of shoes. Um, and they gave me something to put me to sleep. But when I woke up, they were explaining to my dad that my abortion wasn't complete because I was a little farther along than they thought, and that um, I would probably go into labor and pass the pregnancy at home. So there was another arrangement made for us to sort of repeat the procedure, meet them somewhere. They, but, but this was a different warehouse um, or abandoned building. And I don't remember very much about it. I think I was um, numb. I, I could have died. I could have been left infertile. I could have ended up in the hospital. My parents could have been in a lot of trouble. I mean, there were a lot of things that were on our side that I was very, very lucky and will be eternally grateful for. I was always, always grateful for my abortion. I have never regretted it. But what I do know is that there is shame when there is secrecy and it creates shame and stigma. Um, when I decided to tell my story, I didn't realize how freeing that was, that no one could ever hold something over me, that I didn't have to feel embarrassed or ashamed. People may not have agreed with what I did, and that was a risk I was more than willing to take, but I was not gonna be silent anymore about a life experience that changed my life and changed me forever. I always knew, because I, by then I had already been working in abortion, I always knew I wanted to create a safe space that was going to be very different from what I experienced. I had two daughters, they were babies, but my guiding light was always, what would, I, what would I want for my own daughter? But that made me realize there were so many daughters who deserved something different. Trump has packed the federal courts and he's packed the Supreme Court. Um, the only hope that we have is because the Supreme Court is now political, is to have an effect in the next election and to have protest and outcries all over this country whenever there are regulations in any state passed that are ridiculous like the Alabama law. These people are serious. We're gonna wake up one day and our daughters are going to be facing a very dangerous situation if they have an unintended pregnancy. People are afraid to say 
that they're pro-choice because they just don't want to have an argument. But if people don't start speaking out about the positive effects that legal abortion has had on their lives, we are going to lose this.